Today in the news, Intel might be reaching out to Samsung, layers are being peeled off, and we got some solid switches. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. As we all know, Intel has had some trouble with their 10 nanometer process, but they still manage to release new 14 nanometer refreshes every year. Now the other problem that came with this 14 nanometer surge is the struggle to actually manufacture enough. We've heard about the shortages many times over the last year and a half, and we've even seen them revert back to 28 nanometers for some chipsets to free up the 14 nanometer fabs. So why am I talking about this? Well, as you might already know, Intel is branching out into the GPU market next year, and with all the troubles they had at 10 nanometers, I highly doubt that they're looking into building a new fab from the ground up for their XE GPUs. It would make sense for them to partner up with another manufacturer, and guess what? Raja Kaduri, one of the key people on Intel's graphics team, was visiting Samsung at the same time as Samsung revealed their readiness for their 5 nanometer EUV process. This could be an indication that Intel is looking into other manufacturers for their GPU market. On the flip side though, Business Korea says that this visit is more likely to be related to cooperation in the memory sector. Apparently, Intel is looking into GDDR5 memory for their XE GPUs, which is kind of odd since, you know, GDDR5 is getting kind of old for high-end graphics. With the timing of that visit, I don't think this was just a memory-related trip. Although, last year Samsung did hire a former NVIDIA employee who is now the VP of their GPU division, so there is a chance that Samsung is still working on their own GPUs and that Intel's visit was only there for memory purposes. Then we have Samsung in the news for their Galaxy Fold. While most of their reviews and first impressions have been great on the device, some of the reviewers are seeing their folding displays completely break. Now there are two or three categories here. First, there's the people who are literally peeling part of the screen off. Some reviewers thought that the device came with a pre-installed screen protector, which is actually a polymer layer that is part of the display. I mean, come on, MKBHD, you of all people. I mean, there is a reason that they're doing this, but I'll talk about it in a few seconds. Then you have the ones whose devices just seem to have stopped working or have weird problems like a hollow white circle that grows every hour or just a split in the middle of the display. And lastly, there are those who unfortunately have some debris getting caught between the polymer and the display, causing pressure and breaking the display. You see, when the screen is folded to around 45 degrees, the polymer actually separates from the screen, which is technically normal, but this leaves an opening for debris to go into. This is also where MKBHD noticed that layer and thought it was a screen protector. You can sort of see that this is where he started peeling. The retail units are apparently going to come with a sticker to warn people about the polymer layer, but it's sad to see such a new form factor get plagued with such issues. I've said it before, I still think that the Huawei design is superior, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Moving on, it looks like the Switch variants rumors are solidifying. We've heard plenty of times so far that Nintendo has been working on two new Switches, and it looks like we got some extra details on the situation. Nikkei, who actually broke the news at the end of last year about the new Switches, now suggests that the more affordable version will be available first, around Q3 of this year, and that it will support docking into a TV. As far as I'm concerned, if you wanted to Switch and were planning on using it in portable mode, and you didn't want to spend the 400 bucks Canadians on a uh, brand new switch right now, well I'd wait for that model. As for the more powerful model, it could apparently replace the current switch and bring enhancements including, and I quote, usability, improved the image rendering, and changes to the operating system. But this version is said to be in the early planning stages, so we might have to wait until Q4 or until, well, next year. A replacement might be nice, especially considering a lot of people are having issues with the plastic on their switches cracking around the screws and the grill falling off. Me, I just keep it on the dock, so it still looks pristine. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll be answering all of them under this video. Leave a like if you liked it. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Ooh, that was a nice snap.